Hi everybody, it's Kathy here from Kathy Loves to Scrap and I'm here today with just a layout of mixed media that I've created. Um, it's a little bit longer than normal so I apologise for that but there is a lot going on. I've used a photo from our cruise and I'm building a swash of wave in the background of this layout. I love all the blues that you see when you're out on a cruise and so I decided that I would use those colours to create this background. I'm using a whole range of mixed media today. Uh, there's some Kaiser mists, there's some dilution sprays, there's some distress stains, some modelling paste and texture paste. And I found this really, really groovy little brush um, in the makeup section. Um, that I'm using to build up my base. Uh, I recently did a Picasso um, and Pinot workshop. Obviously, I don't drink, but I was part of the workshop. And they always said to start with the light colours and build up from there and you use your light colours to decide where you're going to work. So that's what I've done when I'm starting on this layout this time. So I've got pulled together some distressing pads as well because they're going to build the base and I'm going to use some acetate to um, work with and build on and mix my colours. So I'm going to get started. I've got this royal blue which I'll use later in the uh, layout and you'll see that as we move forward. Now I have this mat here. This is a um, soaking up mat which I use like I let puppy mats really but I use it in its takes up all the stains and sprays and it protects the area that I'm working and it soaks it up and dries it instantaneously so I always lay that down when I'm doing some mixed media especially when I'm doing quite a lot. So to start with as I said I'm going to start with my lighter base which I'm actually going to use the uh, dis uh, Distress Oxide uh, pad here using the Salty Ocean and I'm going to go in a swirling motion um, because I want the effect of the waves. And this brush is so cool. It's actually a makeup brush of some sort. And it spreads the ink evenly across the cardstock without uh, clumping it or making it in dark patches. And I'm swirling it around so it looks like water. And I'm going from the bottom left up to the top right. And it's going to be a diagonal spray across the middle. So at the moment it looks very, very light. But as we move through, you'll see that the... Um, modeling gel that I use picks up all of those colors and blends them nicely. So using the faded denim uh, distress stain I'm putting in some down the bottom here where I'm going from light to dark and I'm doing that too in a swirling motion to keep that ocean water moving. I don't know about you if you've ever been on a cruise I just love sitting on the deck and watching the water. I can spend hours just doing it. It just changes from all those blues to the aquamarines to the deep blues. And it's just very tranquil and relaxing. So this is the effect I'm trying to uh, emulate in this swirl across the page. So I've just gone in and I filled in some more with my paint dauber. And these are the best paint daubers I've ever gotten. So they're great. They're watercolour and they just smooth across nicely. So taking out that acetate again, I'm going to use the clear texture paste. And this is where you get messy. You put your fingers in and you mix it up and you make a bit of a mess, but that's okay. Um, I've divided that in half because I'm just experimenting with my colours first off. I'm going to use the Dilution Stain here. Um, it's a peacock blue and I'm having difficulty getting it out of the tube, which is because I'm trying to do it one-fingered. So I'm going to mix it all up. And I'm going to put it together and smooth it over the top of my layout. And you can see that happening, um, that it's starting to blend all the colours underneath. But it's adding some dimension to the page as well. And I want it to be like the rough water. So now that I'm happy and I know what it's doing, I've gotten a fair bit more of this texture paste. And it is clear, so it dries clear, which is even better. So even if it's not mixed with colour, it's going to dry clear and pick up the colour underneath. This time I'm using um, a denim Kaiser Craft because I want it to be a bit more darker as I move down and an, and an aquamarine colour coming in as well. And it's picking up the colours underneath and it's smoothing them, but it's also giving it that uh, water effect that I want it to have. Because as it dries clear, it'll look like water, like you're looking through some water. 
and it's got some ripples because waves aren't smooth. They've got ridges and caps and that's the effect that I'm going for across this spray on my page. And I'm trying to work fast because it dries pretty quickly and I'm going to be using the sequins very soon and I want it to dry into the sequins. So as you can see there, I've got it across the page and there are ridges and there are caps. I'm just going to go right across now with just some plain of the clear, blending it all nicely. It'll pick up and lighten the top and it'll blend in with that down towards the bottom. And because the top is where I started, it's drying, so I've added that to make it a little bit moist when I go in with my sequence. So I'm happy with that. And that's my spray so far. Now where I get a little bit messy here, we're going to use um, the sprays to put some splatters. And that's because it's like the sea foam. The waves are hitting and the water is going up. And then I'm spraying it across with some darker blues. And then I have got the white to add in the sea foam. So it's now really looking like some waves across there. Just to bring in the sparkle, I'm going to use um, a range of blues and greens and aquamarines and silvers in the um, sequins. I don't use sequins often on a layout. Um, when I do, I actually like the effect, and I think, why don't I use it more often? But that's just what happens. You get into your patterns, and you choose um, products that you're used to using and comfortable with. And a lot of this, you might be thinking, what is she doing with all this? And seeing that layout, yeah, a lot gets covered up. But that's okay, because I want the base. I know it's there. Um, it's under the photo, but I just wanted to make sure, because I wasn't really sure when I first started where the placement of the photo was going to go. And then as it has dried, I'm going in with some glue that dries clear to add some more because I want it to be really bulked up looking like this um, ocean with all the different colours and the sparkle that you get when the sun shines off those water droplets. So this is how it's slowly building. It takes time when you do mixed media to get it right. And the worst part is this is just the putting it together. Then I have to wait for it to dry and that can take you know, anywhere between 10 minutes and half an hour to an hour, depending on how hot it is outside when I put it outside to dry. And I do put it outside to dry because the sun bakes it and it actually dries without all the ripples in the page, which I find very helpful when you're scrapping. So there it is. There's my spray. You can see all the ink sprays in there. It looks like a water spray across the center of the page. And at the moment, it doesn't look that spectacular. But when it all comes together, you'll see how it works. So I'm just going to put that to the side after I put a few more uh, white speckles across the top just to show the spray of the water and add that finishing splatter just so that it completes it and doesn't get absorbed into the white. But as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, no, nope, not quite finished yet, not enough. So after I finish the splatters, I then go and get um, a stencil and I'm using some modeling paste. This time it's the white light fluffy one. And I'm going to put it through this stencil, which is a net, like a fisher's net. And I'm going to put it across so that it leaches out of the water and across the page. And that's just to drag your eye around that splatter of blue through the center. It also adds some interest. And the best thing about the modeling paste is because the blue and the sprays are underneath it, as it dries, it will soak them up. So that will now all go and sit outside to dry. But before I put it all outside, I'm taking this dark royal blue, which I'm using as my border, and I'm going to add some of the modeling paste to the edging here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use it as a peekaboo from behind the layout. So it ties it all together, that nautical feel, that water feel. Um, into this whole complete layer and I don't want much because it's not all the way around and I'm just adding just a little bit that you can see and at the moment you're thinking what is she doing but when we pull the layout together you'll see how that works all right so it's now dry and as you can see the ripples are very minimal put it out in the sun it allows it to dry naturally takes the moisture from the page 
All right, I have gone through my scraps while I was doing that and I have found bits and pieces that I'm going to tie together to build this layout. I've gone and found some old die cut flowers that I've already got in the blues and some greens. I found some butterflies and some swirls. I have this title that says get away, relax and rest or vacation or something. Um, I forget what it actually says altogether, but it's oh, rest and relaxation, I think it says, get away. And so that one, I'm going to use the acetate again, and I'm going to use the stain in the distress stain. I love these daubers. I wish they were yeah, out in all the colors. I love, love, love them. They're so hard to come by now. And they are perfect when you're working with chipboard because they soak into the chipboard and the color stays true because it is a true pigment. And that's why I love them so much because they don't dilute. They stay the pigment that you want it to be. And that's where I have got that chipboard and I'm going to put it to the side and let it dry. I'm then taking my royal blue, which is dry, and I'm going to um, gut the center of it because I'm going to use it for layering as well on this layout. Next I'm taking the um, mixed media background that I've created and I'm actually going to trim off a quarter of an inch from each side to put around the edging that allows um, all of these to work together. So I'm distressing the corners to reveal that uh, net in the modeling paste underneath the frame. So you can see now why I only put it in two little spots because it's a little peeky boo there and I'm going to work down the bottom and I'm just tearing it a little bit carefully and rolling the page and distressing that edge and that's allowing the peeky boo down the bottom as well and that ties that netting into both pieces of the cardstock. So now you can see how just with two pieces of cardstock and some colour and some modelling paste you can build up a very effective layer. I'm distressing the edges with that salty ocean oxide again. Um, that gives a very shaded effect. It lifts it off the royal blue. Um, it allows a shadowing and adds some interest for the eye as well. And so I always try when I've got a plain background to do that to give some more interest. Now, using the middle of that royal blue cardstock, I'm using it to mount my photos. And I've got all of these... Uh, blues in my scraps that I found that are suiting this layout and I'm going to layer those up behind the photo to give the effect of um, the layers of the water and the layers of the blue that are in that photo. So as you can see it's all going to layer up nicely like that and then I have my frame and my photo and it's a, actually it's a true photo, it's a 6x4, I haven't reduced the size of this one, I've kept it as a 6x4. And I'm distressing all of those edges just to add that um, foaming effect from the ocean. So it ties it in and builds that whole lot of layers together. So the, as you can see, I'm speeding it up because, you know, distressing, while effective, can actually be a little bit boring to watch. So I'm speeding it up so that you're not having to sit through the whole entire length of it in slow motion. So now that I've done that, I can start building it. But before I do, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to this peekaboo section. And I found my needle already threaded with my black um, cotton thread. So I thought I'm going to do some stitching into the, to those corners. Like it's holding back the net and it ties into the ni net nicely because the net's got the um, holes through it and the cross stitching looks like the netting. And as you can see, I now have that peekaboo down flat and it adds a little bit more layering to this layout. And yes, I am covering up that spray in the top corner, but that's okay because it's peeking out and it's meant to, because the whole feature is meant to be the photo. And it doesn't matter when you're doing just um, mixed media, you just use what's there and you go across. And don't be afraid to build your background and then cover it, and that's okay. Um, that's what it's about. So I'm adding in um, some clear uh, sequins now just to add some more detail up around that pe those peekaboos 
and tie it into the splashes across the spray in the middle of the layout. And that just draws the eye around the page a little bit more. So it's technically like a cluster. Now I'm just going to layer up all my bits and pieces. And I found this uh, green uh, film strip, which I'm tucking in behind the photos here on both sides. And then I've got these blue swirl um, leaf of things with the swirls in them to carry on the swirls of the water. And I'm going to tuck those in under the corners. And that allows that follow through. It looks like that continuous swirling motion of the water, which is what the effect was that I was going for. Um, yep, as I said, on a cruise, sitting out on the deck, I'm not worried about being in the pool or anything like that. I just want to watch the water. And on this cruise, you can see all the blues there. And they're so rich and opulent. It was a lovely summer's day. And so the water was being reflected beautifully through the sun. And this was capturing that moment. My daughter says, oh, mom, why do you always have to do your feet? But, you know, that's okay. It's, it's just a memory. It brings back that motion and tranquility to me every time I look at this photo. So I'm layering up some buttons and some flowers. I've put in a uh, camera here because it's a photographic moment. I've got that title now that's dry and I'm going to layer it into the swirl so it becomes part of that, not sticking out. And you can see that I'm adding this little butterfly in and because it's in the teal colour, it just blends in but doesn't stick out and it just adds to the flower um, cluster. You can see as you move through, sometimes the sequins that were on the gel are a little bit loose, so I'm just tightening them down with some glue to make sure that they stay in place. Using my gel pen in a teal colour, I'm writing the date and the name of the ship, which was the Quantum of the Seas, and that's all I need to do because it's going into my cruise album and I'll know when that was and what we were doing. And it's a memory for me. Um, I take all these weird photos and my son says, Mummy should just scrap them. So I do. Uh, that's why I've got this photo and that's why I've chosen to scrap it this way. You can see the stitching up here in the corner and the sequins. You can see the sequins through the spray and the different layers all added in there. You can see where the colour is soaked through the um, modelling paste and it blends in to the layout while adding to it. So that's my layout. It's a mixed media one, as I said, something a little bit different for me. I don't do very many big mixed media layouts. I add mixed media here and there, but as you can see, it's got that sparkle. It looks like the water. It's giving it a bit of a swirl for you. And here's a close up of that cluster and this one down the bottom and you can see all of this um, comes together beautifully to create a summery breezy water layout. I'm Kathy from Kathy Loves a Scrap. Follow me on Insta and don't forget you can always give me a like if you found something that inspired and I hope you return soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.